Welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider YouTube channel and my five minutes to cloud series of learning videos. You want to stay ahead in tech or just become more cloud savvy, you're in the right place. Today's video is part of our five minutes to cloud computing lesson series, quick focus videos designed to make complex cloud computing simple and approachable. Whether you're new to the cloud or looking to sharpen your skills, let's get to learning. So Kubernetes is a container orchestration layer, and it's an open source platform for automating deployment and scaling of operations for containers. Uh, it was originally designed by Google, and it's now managed by the CNCF. So ultimately, containers is an important part of cloud development because it does allow you to build container-based systems, which we could do with you know, Docker-based systems. That standard's been around for a while, but it allows us to scale those systems as well. So in other words, it's able to cluster containers so they're able to operate together, benefiting from each other, and really kind of having a platform for allowing these containers to move up and move down in the processing capabilities. So it's a very handy utility to have. So how does Kubernetes work? Well, groups of servers are in, into clusters for running containers. So ultimately, the Kubernetes system is able to take a collection of servers and it puts them into cluster formations, which allows us to run containers at scale. And each cluster can run you know, a couple of containers or hundreds, sometimes thousands of containers. It's able to manage networking, scaling, load balancing, and failover in deployment. So it's a Fairly simple set of functions that Kubernetes has, but it's it's no less important. It's very important for some of these container-based systems. They just simply wouldn't exist without Kubernetes. So what are the key benefits? Well, first and foremost, it has self-healing capabilities. It's able to restart failed containers and replace replaces them as needed. So containers are really kind of considering are considered a running commodity within Kubernetes. In other words, they're able to be launched, they're able to process, they're able to be shut down, and they're able to be replaced. And so it allows you to, in essence, not think about the running and managing these systems, but allowing Kubernetes to do this on your behalf. It's able to provide rolling updates, rollbacks, and automatic scaling, and it manages com uh, complex interdependent services. In other words, the abilities for the containers to work together to form the application. What about the common use cases for containers? Well, running large scale web apps would be the main one. Microservice orchestration would be another one. Obviously, uh, microservices, you know, cloud native development uh, and Kubernetes and containers are really kind of joining the hip. They're often used interchangeable and they're able to ensure consistency across development and production. So what about the challenges of leveraging Kubernetes? Well, it's able to do what it does, as we just explained, but there's a steep learning curve, a lot of complexity in setup and management. So in other words, you need to know uh, a lot about a lot of stuff to get Kubernetes up and running. It's not fairly simple to operate and deploy. Uh, so sometimes you're going to need help, and there's huge consulting organizations that do nothing more than consult around Kubernetes. It's going to need ongoing maintenance and monitoring, and security and cost management are typically going to be higher. There's something that I call a container tax, which you get with Kubernetes as well. So the fact of the matter is, it's just going to be a bit more expensive to run uh, systems to built and deploy using Kubernetes than it is with using traditional technology. So I hope you got something out of that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my InfoWorld blog. Check out my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses and my book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next time, see you later.